Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm not sure everyone's here, but we will start because uh, all knocks on to that, isn't it? Um, very first thing, just to announce while I remember, um, the lift that uh, we have available to us is being maintained and being serviced by the lift engineer. We've told them the best time to do it is while we're in the meeting. So if you're in the meeting and use the lift and need to go up and down the stairs, unfortunately the lift will probably be not available um, for some part of the meeting today. But hopefully by the time we're done, they'll be back to working and then everyone can use that. A um, couple of practicals. Uh, if you haven't heard it before, dinner tonight will be at 6, not 6.30. So dinner at 6, so uh, please be there for that. Um, there is a meeting tonight, not this sort of meeting, but just a, a gathering in the lounge area around 8 p.m. ish. We'll wait till the wash up team have finished, so sometime around about then uh, we will gather there and just go through some practicals, um, some thank yous. We'll do some of the results um, for where we've got to with assassins and things like that, um, and just gently kind of let you know what's going on. So I'm going to hold back a lot of the practical announcements about tomorrow clearing up what happens, when we have to be out, well, that'll all happen later, I'll cover it all then. But just to say um, that there are some people who are unfortunately going to be leaving us before tomorrow. Um, so make sure, um, I think Kate and Santi are going to go with Beth. Um, I think Helen has gone. She's been picked up at half past. Right, okay. Anyone else going before tomorrow? Fine, well make sure you say goodbye to Kate and Santi and Beth before they go. Um, uh, you going before dinner or after? Wait and see. After dinner, okay, great. Um, and the results from the quiz, which I was desperately trying to do here while we were waiting. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to tell me if they worked as a coroner's assistant, that would be really helpful. Because um, I got to a point where I was narrowing it down and realised Jared was on the list. And everything on the list didn't seem to fit with Jared. But I'll give you a tip because it's an unfair advantage. Chat to Jared, he's more than. Loose with his conversation. <laughs> so um, we're going to have some time of worship. Oh, go on. Yes. Yeah, Kushka. Come here. Where are we going to talk? Great. Um, if you weren't here on Sunday, I did a preach about um, God is great and God is great in the wilderness. Um, and pitched the idea basically down in the dining room, if you haven't seen already, there's a load of jars and sand and rocks and pebbles and all that sort of stuff to, um, well, to be honest, you can do with it what you want. But the idea is to reflect on what season you're in right now in your life and put together a jar with the various different things. I will be clearing away the jars. We're going to the bottle banker about four o'clock. So if you haven't done a jar and it's after 4 p.m., you missed a chance, all right? <laughs> yes. um, we're going to have a time of worship and then I'm going to um, minister the word and we're going to see what God's going to do today. I just want to say before we start, many of you have been coming for many years, some of it might be your first. Um, I think for us, we're trying to work out, we've been coming about 32 years, that's what we worked out, 31, 32 years in the year. And um, so probably, you know, when you think multiple meetings happen in one week, probably I've been in this room in meetings over a hundred times. Um, and I've seen God do things in this room. I know for me, I've got some memories. I can actually physically visualise where I was standing when God spoke to me and, and hit me with things and ministered into my life. Um, and I believe this place is a wonderful place. I believe it's a wonderful environment. God does many things in many places. But I just flag up, it's our last opportunity this week to be in this environment, in this room together, in this way, focusing on the Lord in this way. And I just want you to start today with a real expectation of God to move, to move in your life, to really be open and say, God, I didn't come here just to get a little bit of a break. I say a little bit because some of it's work, isn't it, right? But not to just get a break, but to actually be ministered to. And uh, my prayer, I think prayer for all of us who lead this, is that no one would leave unchanged. And so I just want you to have an expectation this morning of what God might do and say. Um, because as someone said, I think Annie said it or someone else did, you know, God is incredibly gentle. He is incredibly gentle uh, and incredibly patient. 
And so in reality, it means if you sit there and fold your arms and go, God, I'm not interested today, there's a really high chance that God's going to go, okay, we'll wait. Whereas if you go, God, I'm open today. Whatever you've got for me, whatever you want to do and say, God, I'm, I'm open for it, got to meet you there. You're like, I'll pour out. So I just encourage you as we come to worship and come to minister the word of God and to allow God to move, for you to be open in your own heart, um, for, for him to reach you this time. So, Sam, you're going to leave us thank you, mate. Um, let's stand uh, as we we'll sing, um, if you're comfortable, obviously. Um, if I've, I've, I've got the first two songs as quite upbeat, joyful songs, because... I think I was reminded last night, of, and we said it uh, a little bit, that the joy that we had doing the tea drawing, and the joy that we can have with the Lord in worship as well. Mm-hmm. We're going to do some uh, upbeat songs. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to clap, clap. But yeah. So if you feel comfortable to stand, let's stand.
says about sing a new song yeah Woo. and i just felt god saying often when i used to hear that he's thinking about a new song you know fresh song we sing songs over and over but i felt like god was saying there's a song that he wants you to sing that is different almost like a motif that's over your life this is my song you know and god says i want to sing a new song over you a new song a new chapter a new who you are a new what he's doing in you a new song the soundtrack to your life, he wants to change to a new song. Paul says, Excuse me. that we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything is being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life but if the ministry of death written engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance which was passing away how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in respect because of the glory that excels. For if what was passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. And like Moses, we put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the vow lies on the heart. Nevertheless, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord read verse 17 again now where the Lord is sorry now the Lord is the spirit you and I have received the Holy Spirit we were born again we have a deposit and we've been filled with God's power and God's presence dwells in each one of you here today every one of you has been touched by the power of God the spirit you know in the Old Testament, we read about Samuel, the prophets. We read about Samson's strength, putting down iron gates and bars and things because of spirit. But the Holy Ghost dwells in you and I today. He dwells in temples of hearts. In those days, he would come and descend upon people. You and I have the Holy Spirit today. I'm just pointing to where the Spirit of the Lord is here this morning is liberty. 
And we are beholding that glory. You and I, we behold that glory just not passing away. You and I are beholding that glory this morning. Receive this morning. I felt yesterday when I was in here, the Lord was reading, I went straight to John. John when the water was stirred, at a certain time an angel went down with the water was stirred up. God's saying the time is now. The pool has been stirred. Don't wait till the pool to be stirred up. Don't wait for an angel. Don't wait. God is stirring up the pool now. He's stirring up. I felt that's what I was saying. So don't wait. He's stirring up the pool because of that man we know the 38 years was lame. And Jesus said, Get up, walk like I'm saying now. The pool has been already stirred. God has done it. Don't wait. Don't wait. Receive from me. Amen. Thank you. 
saying to me is that there is such a thing as voice activated breakthroughs imagine a door that has no keyhole but it has a padlock that opens and locks through what you say yeah. so when pastor Trevor was speaking about you know maybe maybe there's a new song yeah. in the air i don't just believe that that's a melodic song I believe that is a song that is lyrical, that is with words, because the Bible tells me that there is power of life and death in the tongue. And so what if this morning, church, what if this morning, maybe Holy Spirit is brewing a new song, a new phrase, a new sentence in you for this next new season? What if maybe in the, in the face of, of financial lack, what if the new song is Jehovah Jireh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of us may be super uh, melodic, musical, others may not. But the one thing that we can all rely on is the written word of God. Yeah. And I just feel Holy Spirit saying, child of mine, why don't you this morning speak forth my word? And speak Jesus' name over your new season. Yeah. So how about in your own words, perhaps you come from foreign lands, maybe in your own foreign language, maybe in the language of the heavenlies, maybe in English, whatever it might be. Let me invite you as, as the team continue to minister. Let me invite you to perhaps bring forth to mind a scripture or a revelation of God's goodness. And speak that over your family. Yeah. 
over Orpington, over Swanley, over Hertfordshire, over London, over Kent. Because the God that resurrected Jesus, that same spirit lives within you. That same spirit. So, hey, up to you. It's only an invitation. But how about for the next 30 seconds, we make, I don't know, 30 individual new songs when we usher in the power of Jesus Christ into our new season. Because it is the same God who has us living right now in this current season, who has been faithful, who has allowed us to see breakthrough, who will take us into the new one. How about it, church? Amen. Amen. I leave that with you. Thank you, Jesus. we had before is that where the presence of God is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is healing. There is victory. Somebody's situation here, as, as I can see the picture in the spirit, is like a desert situation. But well, in the midst of this desert, I See the rain coming right from heaven, wetting the desert. And the Lord is saying, it's time that this rain is bringing in in this desert situation. Today is the appointed day. I often tell people you don't know when, you don't know how the Lord will visit you. You don't know when, you don't know how. But I just feel like it's a significant moment. So maybe as we continue to worship and lift up our hands, I feel that the Holy Spirit is coming like rain to bring healing upon hearts and to bring freedom 
in different situations of life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. started to work at work something and he talked about healing. It was talking about the scripture of May, uh, Matthew 9, where all those people, the, the, the one who couldn't walk, was able to walk. The, the lady who had, had been bleeding for so long found healing. And, and it's like uh, uh, these, this, this day is a 22nd. And the 22nd, to me, which I've looked up that number so many times because I, I see that number all the time. Number 22, number 22, all the time. For since a year, I've seen that number, 22. And it means open doors, harmony, balance. And I believe that God wants to give us balance. And while I'm up here, I need it because what you just said, I need healing. I need, I need healing with this old wound. I mean, I'm up all night. I'm crying out to God, please, please heal me, heal me. And this is my cry to you guys, too, that I need healed today. Uh, I mean, I just like uh, Dave, when he came up to the altar and said, I'm tired. I need God to move. I need God to heal me. That's how I feel right now. Praise God. Yeah. Heal me. I want you not to switch your preacher's brain. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a kind of logical bit that happens when the preach happens and the notepads come out and the three points. Just keep an open heart. God is speaking. I know he speaks through his word. But I just recognize that sometimes we switch gears. When Santi was talking about a new song, yeah. I really don't want to lose that. Maybe it's just a song for me. Maybe it's for others. But I really felt God lead me to Joel. Joel 2.25 where it says, The Lord says, I will give back to you what you've lost. Get back to you what you've lost the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. This season of stripping back, God says, I'll give back to you. And amazingly to Joel, he says, it actually was me who said those things. That pruning season, that tough season, we were like, where's it all going, God? God says, I said that. It was tough. But once again, you will have the food that you want. Amen. You will praise the Lord your God who Amen. does these miracles for you. Yes. Never again will you be ashamed. Amen. And you'll know that I'm among my people. Yes. For I'm the Lord your God. There is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed and I, I promise you I don't say this lightly it's not a trick that I spin at size well but I genuinely and I've heard it through these two guys as well really believe that we are a, a pivoting moment I really do genuinely believe we're a pivoting moment and there's been very few in my life it's not happened to every meeting I remember once turning up to a meeting and someone saying, you know, this day you're never going to be the same. And I thought, that'd be amazing, but you can't have every meeting like you're never the same. You I mean, God, it don't happen every meeting. Every meeting's great, but I promise you, I really believe that there's something that God wants to do today that is pivotal. I, I knew this morning, well, I'll put it this way, before we got here, I had two sermons prepared and, and the third one was today not prepared and God kept keeping it open 
not really allowing me to structure any sort of sermon. And I do want to just draw out from Isaiah, but, but for very little. It anchors us, but I think we need to continue what we were doing earlier, and that was the plan anyway. This Isaiah passage came to me out of one of our days of prayer. We were in a day of prayer, and I just read this, and I, yeah. everything came to me of these four sermon subjects and what Isaiah was saying, and I really felt a, a witness from God. You know, but all of Isaiah 40, it, it all builds up to the end. It's one of those chapters that's building and building and building and building. God is in the wilderness. He's greater than that. He's able to use it for his purposes. He's wiser than all the things that don't make sense to us. He's greater than all the idols and things that can come out of life. And then we get to this bit. And as we get to this bit this morning, as we've been building this week, I, I, you know, I felt God speak to me, literally in the prayer room last night, to sit and say, God, what are you doing? What are you saying? What's happening? And as we get to this bit, where God is great in our weaknesses, I just felt God say to me prophetically that in this room there are some but gods. But God! Yeah. I know what you're saying, God. I know your word is true. But God! But God, I'm tired. But God, I've, I've, I've been here before. I've asked for this before, God. But God, not me. It couldn't be me, God. But but God. And whatever your but God is, He is greater than. Yeah. He's greater than. Someone asked, do you, do you hear what your children are saying? And Jesus said yes. Ask Jesus. He says yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was walking amongst us when we were singing. He was walking in this room with us, here, with us. I'm not going to put any of my slides up, because again, I don't want to... I want what we're doing here. Feel free to do what you just did. But I'm going to tell you what the time says. It's good. It says he hasn't forgotten you. Yeah. You read through this Isaiah bit and it gets to saying, why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? That's where it starts. Go, why are you saying God's forgotten you? He hasn't forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you. I want you to know this. You have not been disregarded. He's not been busy working over here and forget about you. He has not forgotten about you. And it's interesting, he's not tired. I'm reading this in this last night. It says, have you not heard the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of earth, he will not grow tired or weary. And I, I read that and I felt God say, he's not weary of you. He's not tired of you. He's not tired of the thing you've been saying to him of the cry of your heart. He's not fed up of hearing about it. He's not weary or tired of you. Yes. He's not forgotten you. He's not disregarded you. Yeah. Yeah. He's not like, oh, not them again. Same old prayer they keep bringing. Same thing they want to do. That is not God. He is not tired of hearing you. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's the God that we know. He's, he's a strength giver. He's a power giver. Some of us were away at an equip weekend here in Sizewell, and we we had little clay jars that we were all broken, and we painted, and we put lights in them. They were a reminder of the passage in 2 Corinthians where it talks about how he puts his treasure in these fragile pots, you're not strange to have weakness. You're not lesser Christian to have struggles, doubts, physical complaints, mental complaints. Whatever. You're not strange. He chooses to take fragile vessels to place his treasure in. 
So that no one can go, well, of course it would have happened. Look, it was through them. He wants to get the glory. He wants to take weirdos, strangers, weird people, people with, with limps. Have Jacob had a limp. And say, you see, because only God could do that. Because it's his power. It's funny, he, he doesn't give you strength, he gives you his strength. <coughs> So this isn't about you getting stronger. Right. It's about you receiving his strength. Amen. It's not about you getting better. More powerful. It's about you being weak and his power being at work within you. Yes. He gives his strength. He's not actually building your muscles up. He's taking your weak muscles and going, here, have a download of my strength and my power. And this whole thing ends with this reminder that that is available for some. That power is available for some. And that some is not the special some. It's not the anointed some. It's not the titled some. It's for those who hope in the Lord Amen. for those who wait on God and that waiting isn't like waiting for a bus where you're like well I'm just waiting it's an expectation of God it's a hopeful waiting you go through your different translations you'll say those who wait on the Lord those who hope on the Lord those who wait on the Lord those it's the two words together it's a waiting with hope it's a, I'm not just passively waiting I am waiting on God not waiting for God, waiting on him. For him to move. When I read this, I was thinking, and I'm so pleased Dave shared what he did. Was it Hebrews you read earlier? Was it Dave? What was you reading from? Uh, two Corinthians. Two Corinthians. There's this wonderful comparison of the old covenant and the new. And he's going, you know, this old covenant that actually brought death, it brought condemnation, it, it brought, you know, this awareness of a sin. That was glorious. So how much more will the new covenant be? Yeah. And I'm like, we're Isaiah all this week. It's in the Old Testament. Yeah. And the Old Testament's glorious, but the New Covenant's even better. Yeah. And I was thinking about this, that in, in Isaiah, for those people in that day, pre-Christ, pre the day of Pentecost, they could have hope waiting on the Lord. But when Jesus came, he said to his disciples, you go wait. Yeah. Go wait. And you're going to receive power. This dunamis word, the power of the Spirit. And that's the promise for us as well, that the two fit together. Isaiah says to his people there, back with the, the children of Israel, saying, those who wait on the Lord will receive strength. They'll mount up. They'll soar. And Jesus said, you wait for power. The Holy Spirit comes. I'm, I was reminded this morning when we were in this moment I said I really, this is a pivotal moment I really do I know for me there was a pivotal moment very few people in this room will remember it because you weren't there I must have been 16 maybe 15, 16 we was at Knockout the church that my dad was pastoring up in Knockout Village yeah. and God was moving in that church tremendously amazing things happened there and I remember a Sunday there was a word from God that said, if you want to receive more from God, just come out the front. And some of us come out the front because we wanted more of God. And I remember coming out the front, there's like a crowd of, I don't know, 10 of us standing here because we want to receive more from God. And I remember looking and thinking, why isn't everyone up here? Doesn't everybody want more of God? I mean, it's a win win. How can you not want more of God? And I don't know, I didn't know, interview them, I'm sure they had their own reasons, you know, I've already got enough of them, or this is, I've heard this before, or God can use me. I don't know what the reasons were, but some people just stayed in the seats, and some people came forward and went, I want more of God. And all those people who came forward were the people who then planted Orpington Christian Fellowship Church, which became the Oak Community Church. Yeah, yeah. There was something happening with the hearts of those people 
that was like, I want more of God. I'm not happy with it. I want more. And God took that, and, and that was a pivotal moment. In my life, I can remember it. I can visualize it. I can see where I was standing in the crowd. It was pivotal. And God said, okay, I'll take you guys. And he took the fire in our belly and the hunger for him, and he called us to plant a church that you guys, most of you guys, are now part of. Yeah. And I, I just believe that today is one of those moments. And like Santa said, it's fine, it's an offer. Like you, can, you can do with it what you want. You genuinely can. But I'm just going to do two things. I'm going to play you a song in a moment. I'll explain why. I want to minister to you with a song. And then at the end of that, I've asked uh, Ken and Madeline and Ken and Sandy if they would make themselves available to just pray for people. It takes all the weight off of the leadership shoulders. Like, wow. Oh. What a blessing to have men and women of God yeah. from outside the church to be able to minister to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I just have about four minutes before you do that? Sure. And I want to say, again, do with it what you will. Right? It's not most, most of these services we get to the ministry type end and go, leave if you want and you know, stay behind. I want to generally say stay. Yeah. And, and I want to encourage you just to come up they don't hardly know you, which is an amazing freedom for God to speak and move in a way that you go, well, they didn't know. Yeah. Um, and then men and women of God who God works through yeah. as well. You already heard them start to speak this morning. So, so I want to minister a song, and then we're just going to keep some music going and allow that. Dave, do you want to speak before I do the song? Yeah, yeah sure. You know, Jeff's talked a lot about a, a pivotal moment, a, a turning point. And you know, God's a God that calls out, he calls to. Travis talks about the impartation of God's strength. So God calls out. And in the book of Hosea, which is a really interesting book if you've never read it, it's a story about redemption, about a man and his love for his wife. And it reflects God's love for his children. But in the middle of this, in Hosea 2, 14 to 16, it says this. It says, therefore... I'm now going to allure her, going to woo her. Imagine the most romantic experience that you could ever imagine of God calling to you. And I am going to speak tenderly to her. And there I will give her back her vineyard and make the valley of Echor a door of hope. Remember what Trevor was saying about God restoring the things that the workers had eaten. And there she will be as in the days for her youth, in the days that she came from Egypt. You will no longer call me husband. You will no longer call me master. The valley of Achor. Achor means trouble. In this passage, what God is offering is in the valley of trouble, God provides a door of hope. We heard from Santi earlier about God unlocking doors. You see, Israel were never able to move on from the Valley of Achor until Hosea. The Valley of Achor is the point of their greatest weakness and greatest failure. God had called them into the promised land, the things that he had for them. And one of them decided that they were going to take things and hide them in their tent. And the place he did that, his, his name was Achan, if you want to look it up later. And he hid things in his tent. And they had to leave what Achan had done there before God would let them go and bring those walls down. Before the walls came down at Jericho, there was a terrible defeat. You might be thinking, I've got the walls of Jericho that need to come down. But at the moment, I'm staring defeat. And staring in that ground. You know, it's mentioned one more place in the Bible about Achor, and that's in the book that we've been in. It's in the book of Isaiah. And in Isaiah 65, it says this that Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, and the valley of Achor a resting place for herds. 
for my people that seek me. I think you've heard it a lot of times in many different ways. God is calling this morning that if you seek him, that place of trouble, that place of weakness, God can transform into a door of hope. Thanks, Trey. Sure, can. Uh, I've been holding it for a long time. Thank God for his grace, so, for boldness to come out to sing this song. Um, as I was praying in the morning, I, I said, Lord, let this holiday be a holiday of restoration, a holiday of revival. And David, yeah, so I follow him, what he just said last, that we ask God, whenever we ask God, that God, if I, that is my own word, interpreting what he said, that God, we do whatever we ask to fill us up and all. So I have this song, right from when the um, musician started singing this song that came to my heart. As I sing it, I want you to open your heart. Open your heart. There's nothing God cannot do. It's a moment of refilling. If it's a moment of restoration, just listen and be blessed and open your heart in Jesus' name. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. But then I had a savior speaking, draw from my well that never can run dry. Free my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench the thirsty of my soul, bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more, fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole, fill my cup, Lord, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench the testing of my soul, bread of heaven, fill me no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole Amen Amen God gave me this song um, literally like a week before this week and when I played it to Karen and to Megan, they were both like, I think you really need to miss that as well. So I just play this ministers to you, but also I want to encourage you as I'm singing, feel free to feel free to stay where you are or get up and go to the front and just allow prayer to take place. At the feet of Jesus But nothing shall I want Shepherd who is leading me is calming every storm. Feel not controlling, my sorrows bring me down. For Jesus conquered Satan's power, he wears the victor's crown. At the feet of Jesus, his arms have opened wide. I hear him whisper to my soul, I 
love you still, my child. Though he knows my every fault and sees my every sin, the sacrifice has paid the price. He purchased me for him. rescued me I once was blind but now I see He broke the chains and He set me free He paid my debts and He washed me clean He shed His blood on that cursed tree and He conquered death won the victory at the feet of Jesus is where I find my home. Nothing else compares to this. The joy within his arms. One day I'll see him face to face. I'll look into his eyes. All this world will fade away. He will be my prize. So I run to him who has rescued me. I once was blind, but now I see. He broke the chains and he set me free. He paid my debts. Shed his blood on the cursed tree, and he conquered death, won the victory at the feet of Jesus. Is where I find my home. At the feet of Jesus. Is where I find my. Prophesy, maybe minister. Tell them what you need. Or just say, can you pray for me? But I would strongly encourage everyone to take the opportunity. Thank you. 